Hey YouTube, it's Chris. Welcome back to the channel. So the Acer Nitro XV2 390Hz monitor came in the mail yesterday. Played with it a little bit. I played around with it. I've done some latency tests for you guys on it as far as latency is concerned. Free sync latency or G sync latency if you're going to use Nvidia. Also black frame insertion. Tested that. The latency differences. Go over all the gaming features. It's a pretty cool video. I'd like to apologize for the bad quality as some of it was taken with my phone. But guys, please subscribe and like because we're going through 100k. Appreciate it, guys. Thanks. Hey, YouTube. Hope you're all doing well. Today is a really special day. After about a month of waiting from Amazon.com, I finally received the 390Hz monitor. A lot of you guys were telling me to get 1440p and I was leaning towards that. Especially playing a lot of like Warzone and Modern Warfare because of how blurry that game is, but I had to think about it and seriously since I've started using uh, AMD sharpening with the graphics card It's been clear as day and Doing a lot of the tests recently as you guys know with my latency tester Upping resolution even if you have a good card guys you still Get input lag even if you've got the same frames because of GPU usage and I thought for my future game optimization video guides as well as I want the complete competitive edge I thought this is definitely the right choice to go so let's open it up and see what we get so here we are big mess on the bed really simplistic packaging I appreciate that I suppose that's why they're able to keep it fairly cheap I believe I paid 400 USD for this and unfortunately I had to pay 150 USD for shipping to Australia and like I said it did take a month this is the panel here pretty simplistic and apparently it is the same panel as what they're using on the other 360 hertz so this is a 360 hertz Dell and the real reason why I got this is not because of the extra hertz guys it's because of the gaming features something I realized on this panel especially the Dell is there's no sharpening on the monitor there's no color settings there's just nothing it's just a dull monitor and you would think you'd be okay without those gaming features until you actually start to play games and you kind of miss them um, and that's a real reason one of the main reasons is also I really want the competitive bit edge but I really want to try ULMB or black frame insertion which is kind of like the same technology as DIAC kind of and also just imagine guys even if I wanted to use FreeSync all games capped at 388 or 387 yeah 387 man that's gonna be smooth as hell I'll do some latency tests on this thing and then I'll do some latency tests on this thing and see if I see an actual difference with the latency tool. If it picks up the extra 40 hertz or whatever, and if it is a little bit more of a responsive display, it'd be interesting to see. Guys, everything's plugged in now. I've found an issue. I don't know if it's on AMD drivers, but for some reason I can't have my 240 hertz capture card 1080p cloned with the 390 hertz display. It keeps putting the 390 hertz display into 360 so it looks like I'm not even going to be able to use 390 hertz when I want to record and stream but no big deal I found out you can't really use G-Sync with 390 hertz anyway and I might want to sorry FreeSync I might want to use FreeSync anyway so it's not the be all and end all I can already tell this display looks way clearer on the desktop versus my Alienware panel I've now put the Alienware panel just for the streaming PC for now which is interesting but a little bit annoying at the same time that I can't actually use a 390 Hertz now I haven't tested um, ULMB or black frame insertion yet or they might call it VPS I'm not sure on this panel but um, we'll have to see now testing the latency difference obviously these results can be a tiny little bit variable um, because of how Windows is and hardware and the temperature of the room but um, paint latency Right, so just desktop latency with the Alienware 360, We're looking at about 14.96, so that's on the 360Hz panel, and then on the 390Hz um, panel, 14.59. Now, obviously, for these tests, I'm not uh, cloning or extending displays, just so we can see a difference. Now, I'm going to go test on my Unreal Engine 4 test, which is like 8,000 FPS, black and white. They're running the test now, um, the Alienware 360, um, obviously both are in extreme overdrive mode, looking about 5.95 millisecond latency on the desktop, sorry, on the UE4 black and white test, this is it running right now, epilepsy warning, um, it looks like it's going to be a tiny little bit lower, at 5.51, okay, so, I mean, it hasn't averaged out yet, 
but it would probably average out like a tiny little bit lower than that. So that's good to know that um, definitely it is obviously a little bit faster of a panel and um, unfortunately I cannot use it. I'm going to have to use it at 360, but I guess no big deal. I'm not even sure if you can use um, the back frame insertion tech with the um, 390 Hz mode anyway, so it's not a be on the end all. I do plan on using a G-Sync or like frame insertion anyway, but it's just really annoying because it'd be nice to be able to use the 390 Hz or cloning it with my capture card. Clearly that's either a Windows issue or a driver issue. Um, I'll have to look into that, but I couldn't find anything on the internet because probably no one has this kind of configuration quite yet. So it was kind of interesting. So I originally thought the issue was when I cloned displays. But as you guys can see here, now I am not cloning displays at all. They're extended, okay? And what happens is, weirdly enough, capture card, 240, 390 hertz. Anytime I try to change it, it just keeps going back to 360, no matter what I do. I tried playing around in custom resolution utility. I had absolutely no luck. So that's a little bit of a bummer there as well. So if you have a, it looks like it kind of only really works if you just have one monitor, like one display. But see, that doesn't work at all. I've had to play around in here. Um, it does it cloned and not cloned, as you can see here. And also it does it with just an extended display. So yeah, it's a bummer if someone wants to have an extended display that I can only use 360 Hertz. Just to show you guys, there's a lot of really cool features in here that is uh, one of the re main reasons why I got this thing um, that this doesn't have. Um, and as you can see here, lots and lots of options to play with. Black Boost works really, really well. Um, you've got HDR, super sharpness, which is great, which is what that monitor lacked completely. Um, max brightness is what you want it on anyway. Um, lots of color settings to play around with, which is what the Alienware didn't have either. Which is absolutely fantastic. Um, you've got, you know, VRB. I'm guessing that's a variable, variable backlight, the um, BFI. Um, you know, and you've got, you know, um, also like FreeSync. Obviously, that has G-Sync, but um, yeah, and lots of little options you can play with, which is really really cool. So that's the gist of the settings, as you guys can see. Right, so another update I've just um, set this monitor into 360 Hertz and then the capture card in 240 Hertz and both displays are cloned so the capture cards cloned with the 360 or the 390 Hertz panel but it's only you can only do 360 Hertz mode for unknown reasons very very good news now we get um, 5.59 so I believe it was about 0 0.1 millisecond faster without clone so in saying that, judging from the Alienware results, I would say maybe the overdrive mode is better on the Acer because we're actually in 360 Hertz here and we're cloned. And we're only getting about 0 0.1 more versus 390 Hertz not cloned, which is pretty cool. But more good news, um, turning off content protection may or may not have done something. So we have a slightly low latency again. I believe we got five, we did get 5.59 before, now we're at 5.53. So um, hopefully I don't have any issues trying to play games with the capture card. But in saying that, it looks like it's a little bit lower. All right, black frame assertion does add a little bit of a delay. So we had 5.53, now it's 5.73. That was an extreme. So I'm gonna try this in um, the other mode, which I believe is normal. So results came in uh, quite close. Okay, with G-Sync on, we have 5.54. Now, even with this test, it is a tiny little bit variable, so I'm gonna assume it was at a G-Sync range, so you didn't have the G-Sync latency. Someone posted on the Flowbusters forums, Judging from what I'm seeing, G-Sync adds less delay and VRB, which is black frame insertion, adds a little bit more. So, in saying that, I would say that we were definitely out of range. We need to test with an actual game. All right, first of all, I just want to make sure that um, FreeSync is actually working. Now, shout out to Aishon. He's got a website, uh, Aperture Grill or something, I believe it's called. He's made a program called Smooth Frog, and it's a great way of setting up uh, a program where you can actually test if... Um, 
free sync or G sync is actually working. It'll be hard to see because you guys are at 60 FPS, but you can see that there's no tears at all. Um, and when I turn it off, you can actually see a tear in the lines. So that's a great way of testing to make sure that it actually works because believe it or not, when I had the Dell plugged in, even though it gave me the free sync option in the um, AMD control panel, it didn't work. I was still getting a little bit of tearing, which is interesting. Okay, so we know that FreeSync works because it's a FreeSync panel, which is weirdly enough because that's backwards compatible with NVIDIA, right? I can use a FreeSync panel with NVIDIA. Turn FreeSync off just to show you guys what the tearing kind of looks like. Not sure if you guys can see it at all, but there is definitely tearing. Very, very hard to show you guys on the camera, but there is definitely tearing there now that I've turned it off. So at least I know that it actually works properly. You might have guys might have just seen a bit of a line at the bottom there, maybe. Yeah, sorry if you can't make that out. Yeah, you guys, I think you guys might have just seen it like here. Okay, um, FPS capped at 357, uh, clean even, and that's the latency that we're looking at without G-Sync and without black frame insertion. So 11.13. So now I'll throw on black frame insertion and we'll see what we get. Okay, black frame insertion. At extreme we get 11.57 which is about right it's a little bit of added delay okay now on the normal mode we're pretty much getting the same latency it was weird how it scaled in that unreal engine 4 black and white test because it looked like normal was worse but in an actual match capped um, that's sort of the result so I would call that pretty much the the same um, delay um, normal versus extreme now this looks pretty damn clear, I'm not going to lie to you guys, it's really really nice. Um, normal's nice, but extreme in saying that makes the screen quite dark. Now you could offset that, I'll just scroll down here. See how it makes it quite dark, I might not be able to pick it up as much with the camera, but um, that's definitely the clearest, incredibly clear. But does make it darker. You could probably offset that with either graphics driver brightness as well as cranking up your normal brightness as well as changing your gamma. You could probably get away with that so it wouldn't be too bad. You'd be able to make it work like 1.8 something like that and in-game brightness you'd be able to make that work for sure. All right incredible results. So G-Sync on we get 11.32 milliseconds. So um, I believe that is only 0 0.2 milliseconds higher latency with FreeSync on. That's quite incredible when you think about it. Very, very low delay if you want to cap all your games at 357 and enjoy no tearing whatsoever. That's actually quite incredible. Um, my Alienware measured a little bit higher with a dedicated G-Sync panel. Now, obviously, um, results can vary from content creator to content creator. Just to confirm with you guys that you guys know that um, FreeSync is on. As you can see, it's on there. And if we go down to gaming, you'll see that FreeSync Premium is on there. The main reason why I'm happy about this monitor is it's incredibly sharp and I have all the features like sharpening and I can change colors. Um, and the monitor just looks way better than this blurry mess that I have over here. Not that I think that I can get um, FreeSync to work on Google Chrome, but I've got FreeSync on right now. And if you up the image just a little bit, um, as you can see there. Now I'll go turn FreeSync off in a second, to show you guys a little bit more. Okay, now this is uh, FreeSync off, test UFO. So we can get a clear image for you guys. Doesn't look that clear, does it? Let's see what black frame insertion will do for us. Maybe it will work wonders. BRB, turn it to extreme. Okay. Again, I'm still getting some like little micro stutters there, and I don't know if that's got anything to do with. It definitely looks a lot clearer, that's for sure. Now, that's got anything to do with just like Chrome at the moment. But it's definitely way, way clearer. Okay, let's try to change from extreme to normal. It's definitely way clearer than stock, that's for sure. Okay, I decided to use Frog Pursuit and that looks a lot better. It doesn't look as scuffed. 
So let's see if I can get this to, camera to focus. Really, really hard for me to do this. Uh, it is a little bit blurry. Okay, let's go ahead and turn on black frame insertion to extreme. And it is way, way clearer. Even the camera can pick it up easier too, as you can see. Now, I'm sorry this isn't the greatest camera to do this to show you guys, but um, I've only got my phone and it is what it is. And that looks very, very clear too. I feel like if you go into that length, as far as like the quick latency test that I've done here today, you might as well just use extreme, in my opinion, and turn the gamma all the way up. Um, yeah, and just so you guys know, uh, this is um, a Sean's um, Frog Pursuit program, and I decided to cap the frames at 500 because just to make sure that um, black frame insertion would be working in like, you know, the smoothest possible sort of way. Alright guys, quick update. I've just tried Windows 11 to see if I could get it to be in um, 390Hz. So when 1 and 2 were completely separate, whereas that wouldn't work on Windows 10. So my capture card was number 2 on the left and my gaming PC was on the right, the 390Hz. It would actually work then, but then when I clone displays, it won't work. I've tried just about everything at this stage. Um, just show you guys what I'm talking about here really really funky and i've tried bumping down you know the um resolutional hertz on the capture card um it tells me that i think it's a windows issue um so the max i can actually run is 360 hertz still um because i really want to be able to clone so as you can see here when i put in 390 it just keeps reverting back to um 360 but it will work if the displays are extended, but it doesn't work if they're duplicated. So I'm going to turn around and say that's a Windows issue. I was going to put it in my NVIDIA card, but judging by going from Windows 10 to Windows 11 and then being able to use 390 and extended, that tells me I think it's a Windows thing and I really can't be bothered to put my graf other graphics card in and reinstall the driver. So I'm just going to have to just leave it at that. I was going to actually switch to uh, Windows 11 if the 390 hurt would work in clones um, permanently because they are going to be fixing the performance issues with it soon um, but uh, clearly I'm just going to stay on Windows 10 if I, I still can't hit 390 anyway um, with this method because yeah that's all very well and good I, I could technically extend um, have them extended and then use um, you know NDI to pass over the image or I lose frames that way or I could use OBS to basically clone um, the gaming PC monitor to the capture card monitor but you lose frames with that method as well so it looks like I'm just gonna have to stick on Windows 10 wait for a fix hopefully a fix actually comes if it ever does and then that way I'll actually better run the 390 Hertz um, interesting enough I was able to use um, black frame insertion with 390 Hertz which is great I don't know if FreeSync would work with it but I really can't be bothered to test it at this point but black frame insertion definitely does work the 390 hertz so that's a little update what we're up to now all right guys another quick update um regarding black frame insertion or um vrb something really annoying every time the screen will flicker so either you kind of turn the monitor on and off or you restart the pc or sometimes when the game goes into full screen that setting actually gets reset every time you have to manually go back into the monitor settings and turn vrb back on or black frame insertion back on so that's a little bit of an annoying bug i wish it would just permanently stay on no matter what but um i just thought i'd mention that here um incredibly clear though really really nice so guys that was kind of a quick one just about wraps up the video um 390 hertz is incredible now i didn't really notice a huge difference from 360 to 390 i'm going to be totally honest so it's not so much of a big deal that i can't run 390 with my clone capture card or extended capture card in windows 10 or just cloned on windows 11 extended would work but it's useless to me um the price for performance is incredible i think that if you're on so going from 240 to like 360 or 390 not a huge difference it's really really noticeable in games like kovacs but actual real games it's not huge so it's not the be all and end all if you're on 240 maybe second guess it if you're on 144 and you're looking for an upgrade it's literally a no-brainer i don't care if your pc can't get 360 or 390 fps it doesn't matter um the black frame insertion technology is great or you can use free sync or g-sync whatever on this thing to make it smoother and the input lag difference is nothing even if you just want to run games without both those features and you don't get that many frames it's still totally fine 
Um, I played most of the Battlefield beta on it last night. I tested a little bit of um, free sync and I tested the black frame insertion. I think I'm going to stick with using the black frame insertion. It just looks so much clearer kind of when snapping around, which is really nice. It's a no brainer. So guys, if you're on 120 hertz or 144 hertz, you're looking for an upgrade, just get this. Don't get anything else. Anything else is pointless and a waste of money in my opinion. Um, whoop de do some of the new 360s give you a latency module on them. It's really painful and annoying to use. And if you want anything tested, just ask me because I've got a tool here and I can test something for you and let you guys know in future videos. Really no brainer. Now, if you're really not wanting 1080p anymore, you really want to upgrade to 1440. I don't think 4K is ready yet, in my opinion, guys. Maybe some exclusive tiles with a certain graphics card. You can just get away with it, in my opinion. But then the added delay of the extra pixels to render on your graphics card, which I've measured in um, recent videos, as well as the frames, which go down. Even if you do get good frames and you're using, you know, features like DLSS or dynamic resolution, you still get that added input lag as well, as well as the added input lag of 4K monitors. So it's not really worth it. But if you want to go to 1440p, in my opinion, wait because Acer are bringing out a 300 hertz 1440p monitor and that would definitely be the play. Right now, if you wanted to get something, I believe they offer a 270 hertz model, which is quite impressive. But in my opinion, as far as the most competitive monitor on the market that has all the features is incredibly cheap and there's literally no point in getting anything else in my opinion. Yes, I do have the BenQs, as you guys know. Dyak's great, Dyke is brighter, but in my opinion, price for performance and then what you get with this thing, you're better off just getting this. If you already own a Dyak monitor 240, maybe you just chill for a bit. There's not a huge, huge gain. It's not going to make you game like a god or anything like that, but it's really nice to have. Um, definitely, I'll be sticking on this, that's for sure. But um, that pretty much is the video, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Sorry for the bad quality. Subscribe and like it. I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks.